This video is brought to you by my generous backers over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel and get cool perks like access to the Discord, seeing the videos a week before anyone else, or exclusive Patreon-only gameplays, plus a myriad of other perks, then check out my Patreon. The link's in the description below. Doretti Scrap Savant versus Reaper King. Uh, we've got, well, we've got a turn two Doretti with a Mesmeric Orb, so I think that's a very keepable hand, especially with three lands in hand as well. It's not like we're going to lose out on mana after the Mana Vault is tapped down. Okay, so we'll go down for Snow Covered Mountain, and I think... I want to try and get mental missteps and things like that out of our opponent's hand. So let's go for a skull clamp. See if they go for a spell pierce or something. They do not. So I think that clears the way for Mana Vault into Doretti next turn. Although of course they may have two mana counter magic. But they would have countered our Doretti either way. If that's the case. So let's try our Mana Vault. That lands. So now we'll try Doretti. Don't know how much counter magic you can cram into a Wooburg deck, so apparently they're not packing any, or they don't have it in hand if they do make use of that. Uh, let's get rid of Mycosynth Lattice, and I don't think we're going to need Star Storm this early on. Okay, a Paradox Engine, which is legal in 1v1, and that's really good with a Mana Vault in play. I think we might have to discard that and then sack Skull Clamp and bring it back. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we can just take a few turns and try and hard cast it. Now it is a Cultivate from our opponent. That encourages me into getting down the Paradox Engine as soon as possible. Not going to untap the Mana Vault. We couldn't if we wanted to. So that will deal a point of damage to us. We draw into a mountain. I will get that out because we've got basic land mana doublers in the deck. Mountain mana doublers specifically. I think it is Mere Sire. Skull clamp the Mere Sire and see if we can get into something that we don't mind discarding alongside Paradox Engine. Because... Everything else, the other three cards, I actually quite like keeping hold of. The Mere Sire will replace itself with a Mere Token. And Skull Clamp, of course, draws us two cards. Uh, Alright, maybe getting rid of Homeward Path is the thing then. We will discard Paradox Engine. And the Homeward Path. And then our aim is to kill off the Eco Wellspring. And reanimate the Paradox Engine next turn. Impressively, they've got all five colours in basics, though. And that's only by turn four. The Cultivate did help them along, but they needed to get into the other three organically. So down comes that Reaper King. And this is whenever another Scarecrow enters under your control, destroy a permanent. Do they have another Scarecrow is the question. Let's sacrifice... The mirror and get out a paradox engine. Then we can go in for a mountain. Oh, and I was actually going to sacrifice the Eco Wellspring, wasn't I? Anyway, we can generate a bit more mana this way. So that untaps our mana vault. And we get to draw a card here as well. Okay, it's just another land, so let's tap that down and we'll get down a free mesmeric orb. And then I don't think I particularly care about what's in my hand currently, so let's go for the Wheel of Fortune as well and hope that we don't draw our opponent into Scarecrows. We untap our Mana Vault, so that triggers the Mesmeric Orb. And we get rid of a Rings of Bright Hearth. Okay, Mind Slaver, we can't play and crack, I don't think. No, we might be able to. Let's play that Mind Stone. Mindstorm will untap with a Paradox Engine. And we mill into Darksteel Forge, making all of our artifacts indestructible. And then we can tap those. We need 10 mana to play and activate that, don't we? 
Uh, so yeah, we do have enough. Let's play the Mind Slaver. Really just riding on the back of Paradox Engine here. Showing off why it's been banned. And we mill Oblivion Stone and a land. Then we can tap those down. Take over our opponent's next turn for four mana. Then play Faithless Looting to untap our rocks again. And why don't we just open our graveyard to keep better track. We've got Squee and a Thought Vessel in there. Uh, let's get rid of... Wasteland isn't doing much for us, but we'll just get rid of a couple of mountains. And then we can actually go in for some Simulacrum. <laughs> Getting a lot of use out of our Mana Rocks and Paradox Engine. Milling some more lands, including a Valor Cut. And then I'm just going to put a Skull Clamp onto the Solemn. Now then, let's have a look. They do not have... Oh, they do have Arcane Adaptation to make things Scarecrows. So we can actually play that and name a different creature type entirely. And then there's that for Flashback. Uh, they've got Evolving Wilds. We can play that and fail to find. Pilly Pala. Is this target permanent it destroys? Yeah, so we can destroy their... Commander with Pilly Pala and fail to find with Explosive Vegetation. No, that's too much to do. Let's just go for Arcane Adaptation. I really want to see the back of that. And we'll just name Ally. Then we'll play their Scarecrow and destroy their own Reaper King. Now, they've got plenty of ramp in hand, so they can get back into their commander within a turn or two. But it might be too little too late. We will fail to find on the Evolving Wilds. And that's it. They've got Explosive Veggies, Flame Shadow Conjuring and Wood Elves. They can't make use of the Arcane Adaptation anymore. So we'll just leave it there. And yeah, they decide to scoop to that. That's fair enough. We can actually, let's see what we would have drawn, uh, Dreamstone Hedron for even more mana to make use of with Paradox Engine. We could have actually gone in for Mind Slaver again with Duretti because we got him out so fast. So we can minus him down a few more times. Probably getting rid of Eco Wellspring and drawing another card, which, which takes us into Mirror Works. And that, alongside Mere Battlesphere, means... A couple of copies of Mere Battlesphere. So yeah, I dare say we were going to win that one. Alright, this time going against another graveyard based deck. As much as I like that Mesmeric Orb, it might help our opponent more than us. Going up against Merin of Clan Nel Toth anyway. And I think we have to get rid of that hand. We want to be faster than that. <laughs> There's the Mesmeric Orb again. Alright, well we'll keep that. And let's get rid of, let's get rid of the Mesmeric Orb. Really don't want to help my opponent out if I can help it. We'll obviously just play a land to start with and pass the turn over. And our opponent plays a tap land, so that's really good. Let's go for another mountain. And it's Tormenting Voice getting rid of O Stone. Getting to more mana in a Mountain and Solemn Simulacrum. Now an Evolutionary Leap. Uh, Dreamstone Hedron. Well, there's only one thing we can do here, and it's Goblin Engineer. Now, what do we want to go for with Goblin Engineer is the question. I think it might have to be Mana Vault again. Yeah, with Paradox Engine in hand. We've already seen how good Mana Vault is with Paradox Engine, so let's go for... Where is it? Mana Vault. And we can go for Sacrificing Dark Steel Citadel to get that Mana Vault back into play. Alright, Phyrexian Revoker coming down. Do they name the Goblin Engineer or our Commander? They named Duretti Scrap Savant with that, so we'll need rid of this before we can make use of our Commander. <laughs> Scrap Mastery, okay. Well, that's a good job our opponent named our Commander then. Let's tap that for mana before we kill it off. 
Then we'll aim for our Mana Vault. So the Goblin Engineer acting as a mini Doretti. Uh, then we've got four, five, six. We can just go in for Dreamstone Hedron, can't we? Or do we want the Paradox Engine? I think Paradox Engine's more intelligent here. Because it's a means of untapping the Mana Vault, assuming that our opponent can't deal with it. And out comes Merrin. We're both off to a fairly slow start and getting hit by the Revoker, getting pinged by the Mana Vault, and we've got... Yeah, that was the only downside of last turn's play. We either needed a land or something cheap to play. So this will untap our Mana Vault with the Paradox Engine. That was a really good draw, plus it's card draw for two mana. Chain Reaction gets rid of the Phyrexian Revoker. It gets rid of our Goblin Engineer as well, though. Now we could kill off that Eco Wellspring and try and get into a land. Although we get out our Darksteel Citadel, wouldn't we, if we do that? So, yeah, let's go for that. Eco Wellspring, draw a card. We'll aim for Darksteel Citadel and sack the Eco Wellspring. This way we end up with a guaranteed land, although we were drawing into one anyway. So we actually get two there. Uh, so now we can go like that. Play Solemn. Untap that, we'll have four mana. And we could go for Chain Reaction if we wanted to, but I think I want to wait on that. So we could sack the Solemn Simulacrum with the Goblin Engineer. That also goes well with the Paradox Engine. Because that's untapped as well now, so... Yeah, we'll just leave it like that. We can get back our Eco Wellspring if we want to. And then even if our opponent gets rid of our artifacts, we've still got a Scrap Mastery, so... We're looking pretty good here. Alright, playing a Phyrexian Tower, so that is another Sack Outlet alongside the Evolutionary Leap. They don't have any cards in the graveyard, which isn't a position that Merrin wants to be in. This is... Exactly the reason that I didn't want to play the Mesmeric Orb. Would really have helped our opponent out, potentially. Get rid of the Phyrexian Revoker for two mana. So they've obviously got something to play here. And they don't mind us having Doretti. Okay, Phyrexian Delver, that just brings the Phyrexian Revoker straight back. So here's a body to block and swing in with. Uh, do we want to... Go for the Goblin Engineer now while we've got the chance. Yeah, let's go for... Maybe we could go for the Oblivion Stone. Yeah, let's go after the Oblivion Stone and we'll get rid of a land. Just in case they name Goblin Engineer. Because we don't mind wiping out our artifacts thanks to Scrap Mastery. Alright, forcing them to name Oblivion Stone this time, so we're free to get down our Doretti if we want to. And the fact that they don't want us to go for Oblivion Stone tells me that a chain reaction would really hurt them. So it may be worth going for that as well. Okay, deciding to sack the Phyrexian Revoker, so maybe we'll have Oblivion Stone after all. We don't know what they grab with Evolutionary Leap, do we? Oh no, they reveal always Wood Elves. Why people run white bordered Wood Elves specifically, I'll never know. Uh, okay, so we know that they've got the Wood Elves in hand. They are not swinging into our Solemn. Oh, and of course they get that back at the end of the turn. Yeah, forgot about... Merrin's ability. I do run Merrin on the channel and clearly I don't run it enough to remember the ability that the whole deck's based around. Naming Oblivion Stone again there. Certainly not going to put four mana into the mana vault. Let's go straight in for the the Dreamstone Hedron. That will untap our mana vault. That gives us six free colourless mana every time we uh, play a spell. And then we'll tap these down, and we could go for, 
Well, there's no sense in not getting out Scrap Trawler, really, is there? Because it's pretty much free. Then we'll tap these down again, and we will play our Doretti. Then we can tap that thing down, and sacrifice this to draw three cards. Scrap Trawler will bring back Eco Wellspring because an artifact died. We'll draw three from the Hedron. Okay, and there's a Chaos Warp, which might be worth holding up. So let's minus down on Doretti. We'll get back the Dreamstone Hedron, and we will kill off our Solemn. And that will draw us another card. Scrap Trawler will trigger again, giving us the Darksteel Citadel. We'll draw with Solemn into a Mountain. We'll play that Mountain, so that we've got as much coloured mana as we would like. Tap down the Dreamstone Hedron, and we'll get down another Mana Rock. And we've actually got a Vandal Blast for that Phyrexian Revoker now as well. So, uh, why don't we... Yeah, we'll go for Vandal Blast. Onto that thing. That puts a counter on Merin. Uh, and then, yeah, they're obviously worried about the Oblivion Stone. And yeah, I've just been kicked out into the lobby, so I can't analyse the board. Uh, because I can't remember exactly which cards were where. But I think the thing to go for there would have been to generate as much mana from the Paradox Engine as possible, as we were doing, and then start putting... Yeah, start putting Fake Counters, I think they're called, on Doretti and our Goblin, and then maybe wipe the board with O-Stone, and then go for a Scrap Mastery the turn after to bring all of our stuff back. Yeah, because I don't think we had enough red mana to do it this turn. So yeah, pretty much setting up Paradox Engine and Mana Vault two games in a row there and showing off how powerful that can be. Graveyard interaction with Doretti is very, very powerful and there aren't many mono red commanders that can be as powerful and as obnoxious as Doretti can. I'm looking at building Itali fairly soon, so hopefully I can do something just as worrisome with that. Anyway... Hopefully you all enjoyed these two games. Be sure to leave it a like and a comment, along with a subscribe if you want to help support the channel and push it on to other people, because YouTube does take notice of those things. I'm Tribal Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.